Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to cover a lot of different topics. We are going to check in with our news partner, Center for Families, a little bit later and talk about April's Child Abuse Awareness Month, a very important topic. We're going to chat with an expert about healthy eating. And first, we're actually going to talk about hobbies. So please welcome Blaine Tessman of Performance Hobby Center. Welcome. Hello, hello. Glad to have you. So we got a little bit of opportunity to chat before the show, but we're going to talk about radio-controlled hobbies. And it's actually a vast topic, so we'll learn a little bit more. But first, just give folks a little background where you're located and how long have you been doing this? Yeah, we've been there for about 13 years. It's 5728 Monona Drive. Um, it's right across the street from Ken's Meat Market. It's yeah. kind of a landmark in Monona, everyone knows, so we always tell everyone that. But um, yeah, we've been there for about well, we've been there for about three years now, but we've been open for about 13 years now. Excellent. So not your first rodeo. You've been doing this a while. Yeah, a little while now. Yep. <laughs> well, good for you. And let's talk a little bit about, I'm a little bit of a dummy in this category. So what are the different kinds of radio controlled vehicles? Give us a little yep, background. Yep. There's basically just like everything to like cars, trucks, boats, helicopters, there's planes. The big one now is the quadcopters. Some people call them drones. Um, that, that boat covers it. Okay. So lots of different things and we'll get to yep. drones in a second, but yeah. uh, you were telling me a little bit about organized yeah. local racing and flying. So this is actually a fascinating topic. Explain yeah. this a little bit. Yeah, there's a local club here in town called Marca, um, and they've been around for uh, 20, 25 years. And every year, every couple of years, they just find a warehouse that they rent and they have an indoor track. Um, I mean, a big track like, you know, right now, I think the track's like 90 by 75. Wow. And they race um, the cars and the trucks every weekend, and it's a really, really big deal. So, and it's 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 really fun. And you were saying it takes quite a bit of skill, actually. Yeah, to definitely. Do this. Yeah, I mean, you get really good at driving these cars around the track and getting fast, and it's pretty competitive. They have point series that they hold, wow. like a three point series a season, I believe they do in the winter. Um, so it's kind of almost like real racing, like NASCAR or something, yeah. only it's with I mean, these little cars. I mean, real ho a professional hobby. It, it really is. It really is. Yeah, there's there's paid drivers that, that work for the manufacturers that race around the world and stuff. So. Yeah. This so. is neat. All, st all kinds of things I, mm -hmm. I really didn't realize were out there. And yeah. one thing that is a big big uh, topic in the news right now and such as drones. Yeah. And I didn't even realize before we started that that's what that was called, but I had seen so many different um, articles and clips in the news yeah. about some of the impact of these. So let's talk about that. Is this the most popular thing right now? Yeah, I would say it is. I mean, we still probably sell mostly cars and trucks, but the drones are certainly right there with them. Um, it's just gotten really big over the last couple of years, and you're starting to see um, just all kinds of different things they're doing with them. Um, you can do like roof inspections with them. Guys are literally oh, that are wow. roofers buy them to inspect roofs instead of having to get their ladders out. Um, windmill inspections. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff. People are actually using it as a job. Realtors are taking aerial photos of their properties. Wow. So, so these are having some real practical, real yeah. life practical uh, implications. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, and yeah. there's cameras. That's the whole point. Yeah, is they and there's can actually little, really nice cameras on them, um, so they can take very high quality video. So to get that roof inspection or whatnot, you can really get good video on it. So they're there really starting to do a lot of different things with them now. Drones, the big thing. Yeah, that's definitely uh -oh. the big thing right now. And let's talk a little bit about internet shopping is so big right now. So yeah. internet versus brick and mortar. Give us some pros and cons when it comes yeah. to hobbies. Yeah, that's our major competitors, internet and. But the thing with the internet is, you know, you don't get to feel and touch the product. Um, yes. You don't get to come into our store and look at the stuff. Um, plus, you know, all of our staff is very knowledgeable, so mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't get to have anyone help you when you buy on the internet. Where yes. we help everyone. So. And there's actually a lot to know. So tell me about yeah. hobby versus toy and what that yeah. sort of means. Yeah, yeah, the toy level stuff that you'd buy at, say, Radio Shack or Walmart. Um, Yes, it's cheaper, but when you break it, essentially you just throw it in the junk. Hobby grade level stuff that you get at our store, we carry all the parts right on our wall in the store. So if you break a suspension component or just anything on the car, you can just come in, buy that part for like eight bucks, fix your car, and you're back running it again. And they just have a lot more performance than the toy ones, 
and you can soup them up. There's different motors and different tires, different bodies. Oh, so. People love that. I yeah, bet. so it's it's <laughs> real hands-on, anyways. You yeah, know, good for kids. Well, that's important, and that's why you go to a store like yours so that you can get that information, that knowledge, and and then be able to replace parts and do right. different fun things with them. Yeah, exactly. Forward. Right. Well, this is great. I mean, we could talk about this probably all afternoon, but um, we're gonna have to go and it okay. was fascinating chatting with you and you're over on Monona Drive so go check out Performance Hobby Center in Monona and stick around we're going to talk about an important topic from Center for Families that's next. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We are discussing with an important organization that serves as a resource for parents and support and because of that are now our news partner here on Talk of the Town. They need your support and we're going to talk about an exciting and important topic also coming up. So joining us is Julie Sheldon from Center for Families. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. So glad to have you. So this is an important topic we're going to talk about, but mm -hmm. an exciting event that we're kind of coupling together. Yes. So April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Correct. Now tell us about the relationship here with Center for Families and why basically this ties into the work you do. Sure. Um, well, at Center for Families, we know that one of the world's toughest jobs is, is being a parent. So we partner, actually our mission is to partner with parents in their efforts to nurture, protect, and teach their children. And we do this through uh, programs that focus on crisis and emergency care. We offer in-home support, early literacy programming, uh, school readiness programs, and in all these, these efforts, what they really do focus on at the end of the day is the prevention of child abuse. And we want to make sure that our client families are free from abuse and neglect. Yes. So um, as, we, as we move into April, again, Child Abuse Awareness Month, mm -hmm. um, this is just a great time to get our message out there and, and educate the community on how they can support their families. Absolutely. And you've partnered with a big name here. So Badger Harley-Davidson yeah. is going to is going to help out with this campaign. And talk to me about this program. It's called Pinwheels for Prevention. And yes. what are you doing? So Pinwheels for Prevention, it, it's a national initiative. Uh, Badger Harley-Davidson chose to partner with us on this. Um, we have the pinwheels here, which are a representation of the prevention of child abuse. Yes. Um, they're also a great little reminder, a visual statement to say this, I have a commitment to, to ending abuse and neglect. Um, and, and a whimsical reminder that childhood is, is, is to be fun and, and bright and cheery. So what Badger Harley-Davidson will be doing is they'll be selling these pinwheels and um, we have little lapel pins too if somebody chooses to do that. Um, they'll have those available at all their registers and what they're doing is encouraging their customers to add the pinwheels to their bike or car throughout the month of April to show their commitment and support of the prevention of child abuse. So what an outstanding way to do that and so you can look for these on the back <laughs> of folks motorcycles and uh, hopefully we've got a lot of them riding around the map. That would be area. great. I, I will, I'm very excited to be able to see these little pinwheels on the back of a motorcycle. Absolutely. I think it's great. Yeah, and um, Harley-Davidson actually partners with a lot of different mm -hmm. causes. So I think it's interesting that they've chosen this one. Why do you think that they've chosen to help Well, we talked about families? this. Um, Badger Harley-Davidson, they, they have been a longtime supporter of Safe Harbor, which is another local organization. Um, and they work with children uh, to reduce trauma um, if, if children have experienced abuse or neglect or have been witnesses to crime. So okay. um, the idea of, of Badger Harley-Davidson partnering with us and the prevention movement just really makes sense. So we can work on the prevention side. You know, I love that they support that, but the truth is that this stuff still happens and that they're still supporting another organization that helps on the other side. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit further about Child Abuse Prevention Month. Does Center for Families have other initiatives in terms of this month? And if so, for folks at home who are looking to get involved, mm -hmm. what can they do? Sure. Um, well, on April 7th, we've partnered with Culver's of East Town to do a scoopy night. So 10% of all sales from 4 to 9 uh, will come back to Center for Families. We'll have the pinwheels there, too, for, for purchase if people want to be part okay. of that. Uh, an information table. Um, we're also doing a mini golf scramble with Wisconsin distributors on April April 11th. Again, those proceeds go back to our child abuse prevention programs. Um, for people to get involved, we really need volunteers for that one. So okay. contact me if they want to do that. And then throughout the month of April, we'll also be doing a social media campaign just to educate on the importance of prevention of child abuse. Okay. So we really um, encourage people to follow our Facebook page and, and follow along and, and learn with us. Lots of things to, to get involved, so go to the website too or give you a call if you have any questions yeah, because absolutely. that's the best way to find more information about how to get in touch with you. 
Uh, out of curiosity, when are these going to be available and how much? What's the cost? Certainly. So the pinwheels and the lapel pins will be available um, throughout the month of April. So starting April 1st, they can go to Badger Harley Davidson, which is on Mill Pond Road. Okay. Uh, they will be $5 a piece. That's the suggested minimum donation. People right. are more than welcome to, to donate you more if they'd like. Give as much as you like. Absolutely. Yes. We're not going to turn that away. Um, so again, throughout the month of April at Badger Harley Davidson. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, what a wonderful thing you're doing and yeah. how great for Badger Harley to to partner with you on this. Because oh, it's I great. Think yeah. Be wonderful. So, uh, month of April, Badger, Harley Davidson in Madison. Get your pinwheel. Show your support for mm -hmm. Child Abuse Prevention Month. Check out centerforfamilies.org and stick around because we're going to be right back with more Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Well, as you know, healthy eating can be a challenge, particularly if you're somebody on the go. So, here to take the work and worry out of meal planning, we have the owner of a Seattle Sutton and Marty Burke. How are you today? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. So, very exciting topic because this is something that is on the minds of a lot of folks. It is that time of year when people definitely are thinking about, uh, yeah, changing their clothes. Yeah, we got to get out of the sweaters <laughs> yeah. and get back into the stuff yeah. that shows everything off. So, why Seattle Sutton's Healthy Eating? Tell us just a little bit about what you do. Well, we're uh, a, a meal replacement program in its simplest form. We provide a high quality meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day for a week. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. It's fresh. It's um, uh, always ready for you. It's not a membership club. It's not a counseling service. It's just a high quality meal replacement program. And you're right. We shop, we cook, we plan, and put it in your refrigerator for you. And let's talk a little bit about who really are your clients. Who benefits from this? I like to say anybody who eats, but yeah. that's, this, <laughs> that's too <laughs> simple. Uh, the truth is uh, probably any given week, over 50% of our customers are trying to lose weight. Some are trying to lose weight because they just want to lose weight. Some are trying to lose weight for medical reasons. We have a lot of uh, diabetics, a lot of pre-diabetics that have been told to be careful. Um, and so there are certainly medical reasons, blood pressures, uh, blood pressure uh, situations. Mm -hmm. There are reasons why people try to lose weight. Many, though, are simply just trying to drop some pounds. But it's, it's better than that. I have a number of uh, assisted living customers, um, children out of the area, grown children out of the area uh, buy food for their uh, parents who are in assisted living situations. It works okay. great for that. It's really user friendly for people that can't stand up at the stove all day and can't mess with their refrigerator. It's really nice for that. You know, new moms home from the hospital, other recovering people home from hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, uh, you've named a lot of folks. Busy people <laughs> yeah. who just don't want to go to the store for a little while, and you can't stop at Culver's. Again, I love Culver's, but you know. Well, you, yeah, it's not it's not a lifestyle, and this is definitely seems to be a, a lifestyle that is going to uh, help folks lose weight or just stay healthy. It's hard to eat healthy when you're when you're needing convenience sometimes too and we um, you know you will remind you after a few weeks of this you'll be reminded of things like portion control and then you you certainly welcome to continue with us I have people that eat for a few weeks a few times uh, a year I have people that have been eating it every week for 10 years so uh, you can learn some things from absolutely. just participating for a while too yeah absolutely and it's interesting too how your palate tends to change as you integrate more healthy foods into your lifestyle mm. and and really look forward to more of those and craving those foods and I want to ask you about there are some different businesses that do sort of similar things oh, sure. What's, what sure. makes this sort of different I think probably uh, uh, the two major differences are we are we, there's no contracts involved with this it's week to week Oh, really? you don't have to sign your life away for the next six months mm -hmm. to get the free week or the free month or whatever whatever's dangling out there um, it's always week to week. You don't make a long-term commitment. And our food is fresh. Uh, it's not frozen. It's not freeze-dried. There's no foil pouches. You don't have to go shopping to add to the meal plan. It is a com complete ready-to-eat meal plan. That's important to know that you yeah. don't have to do your own shopping to You add just don't to have it. to think about it. People get all nuts thinking about food and it, it moves them in, the, in a wrong direction. You don't have to think about it anymore if you don't want. That's great. I will take the guesswork out for yes. us. I'm sure folks at home want to know how is the food? Is it delicious? Is it 
does it taste healthy? What is, yeah, what's yeah, your I mean, opinion? you're kind of asking the wrong guy. It's really good. <laughs> uh, it's fresh. I think that's the key thing. It's yes. freshly prepared every week. Uh, our, our, we even distribute twice a week. Our food is new in your refrigerator twice a week because it's meant to be fresh. So you get part wow. of your meals on Monday and part of your meals on a Thursday to span the entire week. Um, you, you, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, uh, turkey, uh, chicken, fish entrees, mm -hmm. uh, five, a five-week menu cycle. Every meal is different every day for five consecutive weeks. That's great. So you, you're, you're going to get more variety than if you went to the store all by yourself. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, wonderful. So we can contact you or we can call, go to the website sure. to get some more information. Sure. And uh, this is this is a great way for busy folks to eat healthy. Oh, so yeah. I appreciate yeah. it, Marty. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank Seattle you. Sutton. It's been a pleasure. Nice to see you. And stick around. We're actually going to dive into the importance of dental care for dependent elders. We're going to talk about that right after the break. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're going to talk about an important topic about dependent adults who are often at increased risk for oral problems. So this is a topic I don't know a lot about, but I'm excited to learn more. We have Angie Stone joining us, who is the founder of High Life. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Glad to have you. I'm pleased to be able to learn more about this. Now, we chatted a little before we started, but mm -hmm. give folks at home a little bit of background about High Life and what kinds of services you offer. Okay, High Life is a network of dental hygienists. We're also certified caregivers, and we offer weekly oral care services to dependent elders, and that includes brushing and between the teeth cleaning so that we can keep the bacteria in their mouth controlled so they don't get sick. Absolutely, and that's the key, so they don't get sick. So this is the part where I am learning and would like to learn more. Why is this service so important? Talk to us about some of the cause and effect here. So we know that the mouth is absolutely connected to the body. Um, dentistry and medicine should be coupled, right? Absolutely. But what happens is um, we tend to think that they're not connected. So what we do know, though, is that when something is going on in our mouth, if we have infection in our mouth, it's going through our entire body. A dirty mouth can lead to things like heart attack, stroke. It can complicate diabetes. It can also um, enhance Alzheimer's disease. So we have a whole bunch of things that can happen to us physically if our mouth is sick. And so the mission of High Life is to prevent all of those other things from happening by keeping the mouth clean. And that's where I think people don't know about how connected this is until maybe you encounter something with maybe a, a family member, a loved one, or yourself to realize how important it is that oral hygiene can affect your entire body. And I think that is just absolutely fascinating. And because there's so many ties, you are here to help some folks that need help. So let's talk about who it is that High Life actually services. The people that we help are those that can't help themselves. And we do this innately as, as a um, community with our kids. You know, we have all sorts of programs for our kids. We have sealant programs. We have fluoride varnish programs. But when we get old and we can't take care of ourselves, this is one area that's very neglected and we need help. We don't have the physical abilities. Sometimes we don't have the mental capabilities to remember. Mm -hmm. And so everything, uh, the bacteria runs wild in the mouth and affects the other part of the body. So we help those adults that can't provide these services for themselves. And what do you think, the adults who do take advantage of this service, what do you think they would say are some of the benefits of utilizing this? That's, that's a great question. Uh, the people that we do see just tell us that they're um, learning how important this is and how much better they feel. And we also know that having someone come in and seeing someone once a week from the outside world mm -hmm. is very beneficial for them on a personal level. And the uh, camaraderie and the relationships that are built is helps also and then we can be the eyes and ears of maybe someone the family members who aren't there and sure. we can let them know if something maybe has happened during the week that we've been absent so there's actually some kind of added benefits in in terms of care of just sort of being there Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked a little bit about the where, but let's talk about the when. When do you provide these services? So we provide services once a week, and that's on a schedule of you know when the family or the care facility wants us to come. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of just work that out with the family, but we are on site, wherever that elder is, once a week. So again, if a tooth gets broken in between the time that we're there and the next time, we know about that in, in a week. Wow, 
Outstanding. And if somebody wants to get more information, if they've got a loved one at home, this is something that piques their interest, what's the best course of action? The best course of action would be to reach out and check out our website, okay. which is highlifellc.com. Okay. And they can find all sorts of information there about what we're doing and um, contact us if they have any further questions. And this is for people in their own homes, in care facilities, um, any elder that needs help wherever they reside. Absolutely, and I wanna mention too, Angie, that you have a book. So some powerful wording here, dying from dirty teeth. And I saw that wording on your website and it kinda hit home because it's, it's, it's powerful. You can actually die, can pass away from not being treated properly if if that's possible. So if you want more information, go to the website, check out the book, Angie Stone, Dying from Dirty Teeth. And I appreciate the information, Angie. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks Thank so you much so for much for us. having me. Yeah, Thank you. Nice to have you back. That was lots of good information. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us here on Talk of the Town. And please join us next time. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah. We've got a lot to talk about on today's show. We are going to chat about a very important awareness campaign coming up for April. It is Child Abuse Awareness Month, and Center for Families will be here, our news partner, to talk more about that. We are also going to talk about wedding season. It is that time of year. We're going to talk events and planning. And joining us first, we are actually going to talk about pets. So we've got from Dog Days Grooming and Care, we've got Emily, an owner and Danielle, manager. And welcome. Thank you. Glad Thank you. to have you. Thank and you. Spot, I should introduce, who is happily snoozing away, it looks like, on set here. And uh, we're glad to have you. So Thank you. Um, let's kind of dive right into it. If you have not heard of Dog Days, for folks at home, give us a little background. What makes you unique? Um, what makes Dog Days unique is our completely cage-free atmosphere. We really like to push group socialization, playtime, indoor, outdoor. Um, our grooming facility is also cage-free. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time spent with the groomer per dog. Um, we also take our groups of dogs down to the dog park, so they have full off-leash, um, cage-free, yet the, the park is fenced, but it's off-leash off running and playing and even an opportunity to swim. We do that rain, snow, or shine every day. Uh, daycare and boarding dogs get that opportunity, so that's okay. definitely special. So you do grooming, boarding, and daycare, so that's all correct. three. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you guys stay busy, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. How did you, how'd this all start? How did you get into this? Um, well, uh, long ago I had an idea of how I could incorporate one of my favorite things in the world, which is taking dogs to the park um, and make it into a job. So I uh, thought about folks who maybe work full-time jobs, two jobs, have little kids to raise, but also really want a canine companion in their life. Um, and especially for puppies, who so it's very difficult to wear them out and they really need that dog play. So I uh, thought about a way that I could offer that to people as a business. Um, I found this great location very close to the area dog park that we are located to, which is Yahara Heights. Um, and I learned to be a groomer and things just kind of snowballed from there. Now we offer boarding and we have a really great returning clientele and a really great family atmosphere that we run out of. So Wonderful. So you're getting to do what you love. And for folks at home, pet owners at home who are thinking about utilizing some of your services, kind of walk us through what maybe a typical day looks like. Sure, yeah, I can answer that. Um, we open bright and early, 7 a.m. Uh, between 7 and 10, dogs are getting dropped off for daycare probably a couple grooming dogs at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, 10.30 to 12.30, we take trips to the dog park, groups of three to five dogs. Um, they come back, cool down a little bit, take a little afternoon nap, mm -hmm. probably wake up, eat a little lunch, um, and play yeah. for a couple more hours, and then their parents come pick them up between five and six. Sounds great. I would like to do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? It's and fun. is this what your pup looks like after? Just kind of worn out, had a busy day. <laughs> yes, exactly. We like to know that parents will let us know that their dog is wiped out and very tired and feels fulfilled and is sleeping and dreaming happy dog dreams. And well, that's wonderful. Mean, we're doing our that's job. like exactly yep. what you want as a pet owner. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the socialization piece because they get an opportunity if they're an only dog, an only child, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They get an opportunity to sort of socialize with other animals 
animals. So how does that work if they're puppies, if they're older? How does that kind of incorporate that socialization piece? Okay, um, so uh, we believe that socialization is of the utmost importance for a dog's well-being, for their learning. Um, dogs in a group, in a pack, um, that's natural for them. It's natural for them to be outdoors together and indoors. Um, dogs of all different ages will teach each other the skills and the wisdom to interact in a group mm -hmm. and also interact uh, with humans as well. Um, so for puppies, four to six months is not too early to start your dog in daycare or even if you don't want to use a daycare, you could also just take group walks with friends or use a dog park to get them out there making new friends per se. Middle-aged dogs or maybe teenage style dogs, they are testing boundaries. They're trying to figure out where they are in the pack, in their human home and in their dog-friendly pack at work or at dog days. Um, so they also are learning skills and they're helping teach the puppies. Um, and then also keeping their life enriched. They're playing fetch. They're getting out there and, and finding a richer experience um, at the park and playing with other dogs. And then it's important too for senior dogs because they can, you know, they're getting older, they're getting a little slower, they can kind of, you know, get complacent about their lifestyle and their routine um, and do a little more sleeping and laying around, which is good, but it's good to keep them lively in the brain, uh, lively in the body, and also their dogs have a beautiful way of teaching each other uh, respect for their elders, and so the older dogs, they really teach the puppies how to behave, so it's Wonderful. helpful for everyone. So the dogs are happy, the owners are happy, mm -hmm. life is good, right? Yes. Well, thank you so much for it. Time goes so fast, but we enjoyed having you and, and learning a little bit more about what you do and how you got started. So visit Dog Days Grooming and Care. And uh, Miss Emily and Miss Danielle, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Spot. We appreciated having you. Thank you. Stick around. You don't want to miss. We have Center for Families up next with an important message, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. What a fun time of year as wedding season is about to be in full swing. So we are going to talk about wedding planning and event planning and who better to do that with. We've got Sarah and Andrea who join us from Cherry Blossom Events and we're excited to have you. Thank you. Thanks yes, for, having thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So perfect timing really to talk about yeah. this kind of thing. We're finally getting spring weather. I'm sure brides are in full planning <laughs> mode. So. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's do just a little background. How did you guys get started in this industry? Yeah, um, Andrea and I have both just always had a passion for wedding and event design. Um, it was something we were doing separately, planning weddings for friends and family. And when we started wanting to start a family of our own, we kind of took that leap of faith and really made it a career for ourselves. Um, and it, it's really grown and taken off and we've enjoyed it. So yeah, we're celebrating um, five years in oh, April. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Thank yeah, the company does about 40 to 45 weddings or events a year and it ranges mostly in weddings but we also do a few corporate events we oh, just great. got done doing the frosty ball at the overture center fun. so we kind of switch it up and it makes it fun and interesting oh absolutely what a fun industry to be yeah. in. very exciting and of course I want to know all about trends going on so let's share with us some of the trends particularly here in Wisconsin are you seeing any great trends swing through Yes, absolutely. Um, this season we're seeing kind of a move towards some destination weddings, but in Wisconsin. So kind of the concept of a destination wedding and everyone traveling, but um, destinations such as Pepin, Wisconsin, there's a great new winery that just opened that has a beautiful venue on site, a lot of Door County, Green Lake, Lake Geneva. So getting everybody to travel, but like a drive instead of a flight. Oh, great. Great for the wallet, too, when you're attending these weddings. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Makes it idea. more of a weekend adventure. Yeah, yeah, how nice. Kind of get out of town a little bit, but you're still staying close yeah. to your roots, so that's wonderful. And having somebody like you come in to an event planning process, give us some of the benefits as a bride or whatever event it might be. Yeah, um, I think a huge benefit of having a wedding planner is always that we know what vendors are right for you as a couple and as a bride. So a lot of times with Pinterest and with their own pictures that they've pulled and what they're envisioning for their wedding, um, you know, you can obviously Google or see in a wedding planner um, and guide magazine or in bridal magazines kind of different vendors that are out there but with a planner you know who is going to be a right budget and style fit for you and for your wedding so instead of doing so much legwork on your own we can kind of guide you to the right direction and that could save us a lot of money too definitely and um, just having somebody have responsibility over that coordination piece to take the guesswork out mm -hmm. give you some free time back on your big day 
Nice. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. And then also the wedding day. I mean, yes. like yeah. to just be able to relax and enjoy and not be worried about all the details where they are to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. And for couples who are thinking about planning, when do you start? When do you get going? Yeah. We tell couples, like, as soon as you're engaged, reach out to us. Um, so it really varies. You know, sometimes we're working with a couple for 18 months to a year. Sometimes they're just, um, you know, just got engaged, want to get married this season. So it's more of a six to four month planning process. Um, there are kind of some time sensitive things that as soon as you're engaged, it's just beneficial. You're going to have more options to get started right away. Fabulous. If you could give one piece of advice before we go, what would it be? I think the biggest piece of, it, of advice that Andrea and I like to say is make the wedding unique and make it about the two of you. Now in weddings, we're seeing ways to bring in your love story, to bring in details about you as a couple. Each wedding is so different and unique. We like to bring out the couple's personality within the decor, within the food and drink. So really just make it about the two of you. Absolutely. So hire a wedding planner. They're going to save you some money, save you some time, get started right when you're engaged and make it personal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a fun way to think about an event and getting yeah. married. You guys have a great job and I'm jealous. Lots of fun. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Perfect timing. Andrea and Sarah from Cherry Blossom Events. If you are thinking about planning a wedding or event, give these folks a call and we're going to be right back. We're talking financial with Badgerland Financial after the break. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. As promised, we are joined by Badgerland Financial, and we're going to talk with Laura Hirschlip, who joins us. How Hello. are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. Thank glad you for having us. Yeah, very glad to have you. Some exciting news that we're going to talk about, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's give viewers at home just a little bit of background about Badgerland Financial, if you, you would. Thank you. Um, so Badgerland Financial is a member-owned financial cooperative and we serve agriculture and rural communities throughout southern Wisconsin, the southern 33 counties in fact, and we have 17 different locations throughout the area. So we have offices in Dodgeville, Monroe, all the way up to Arcadia, Mondovi, over to the eastern part of the state, Fond du Lac, Burlington, and several different areas. So we really focus on providing credit and support and financial solutions for the agricultural communities as well as rural communities and folks looking to have that little piece of rural America that they can build their dream home on or have their uh, hunting land where they get that trophy buck on, if you will. So we also provide beyond credit tax and accounting services, crop insurance, as well as appraisal services. So we wow. have a lot of different things that we offer at Badgerland Financial. Yeah, you sure do. Yeah. Run the gamut of services. Lots of help for folks. Exactly. And now I understand that you opened a new office, we which did. is very exciting. So in Sun Prairie, correct. tell us a little bit about that. When did it open and some of the features and benefits of it? You bet. It's been a really exciting time for us. We opened the Sun Prairie location in January of this year. So we had had a Madison location that was turns out to be just about three miles south of there. And as our staff grew, we um, felt that it was time to um, grow our office location. We had that opportunity in Sun Prairie and, of course, to meet the needs of our members and prospects throughout uh, the Sun Prairie and Dane County area. So at the new location, it is 31,000 square feet. Uh, it sits on 3.66 acres. So we have wow. um, 50 employees that are, are there right now, room for 70 employees, and we have room to grow around the facility. So it's really exciting. It also um, is has two conference rooms as well as a training room for 120 people. So there are a lot of great features that the new facility um, has and we're excited to be in there and excited to be showcasing it. Absolutely, how exciting. Great opportunity mm -hmm. for people to probably get a variety of services. You mentioned uh, some that Badgerland Financial specifically does. Is the Sun Prairie location going to be offering those same services? Yes, all of those services are located right in the office. And what's really great about our staff is our staff is very mobile. So if farmers or prospects would rather that we come out to their office, come to the, to the barn, talk over the milk tank, we are glad to do that. Our staff is glad to do that. And they love doing that. You know, we have a staff that grew up, um, many of which on farms or in uh, rural communities, and really appreciate all that our um, members, our prospects, our farmers are involved with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really an exciting time to be um, involved with Badgerland Financial, and we're so pleased to be able to offer those um, different services to our customers. It is an exciting time, and I love that your your passion and you're proud of it, clearly. Absolutely. And it's very exciting. Definitely. And what's great is you're doing an open house for Correct. people to be able to come 
check out some of the things that you do. So tell us about that. Exactly. So our members that are served by our Sun Prairie branch are invited for an open house next Thursday, April 2nd from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. So we'll be, um, our staff will be there that day. We'll be having tours of the office. We'll have re refreshments that are available. It's just going to be a really great opportunity to celebrate the new location, see all that it has to offer, and I'll get to get a little bit more comfortable with location as it, it happens to be right off Rhino Road, but is right by that y YMCA in Sun Prairie. You can see it right from 151. We have a wonderful um, billboard, scrolling billboard that's right along the highway. So it's a great location and uh, very accessible for folks to come to. And we invite um, those members out next week. Fantastic. So go check them out at that open house. But it's actually, real quick before we go, mm -hmm. it's part of a larger event that you do. So exactly. talk to us a little bit about Patronage Day. What Absolutely. Is so we're so excited about it. So um, same day as the Sun Prairie Open House, we're going to be selling our, celebrating our Patronage Day at all of our branch locations. Next Thursday as well, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., our Agricultural Serve members are invited to come, stop in the offices for light refreshments, and really we're going to be celebrating patronage. It's one of the cooperative benefits that a member-owned financial institution as Badgerland Financial is able to give back. This year we'll be giving back $13 million to our agricultural members. So it's really wow. exciting. Over the 11 years that we've been um, paying back patronage, we will um, have paid back a total of $98 million. Wow. So those are numbers that are approved by our board of directors. Our board of direct directors are made up of our members. They're farmers. They're just like um, the other producers that are part of our organization. So it's an exciting time, and we're so excited. It's the first time that we're going to be having our patronage day, and we're going to be celebrating it. So we're looking forward to it. What an outstanding opportunity for people to learn more about what you do and tie it into a bigger event. So that's exactly. just wonderful. Well, Laura, thank you so much for sharing all this great information with us. We look forward to that open house. Go check them out over on Northridge Drive in uh, Sun Prairie, is that correct? It's actually on Jenny Run Trail. Jenny Run Trail. Yep, oh, 2900 I'm Jenny Run Trail <laughs> in Sun Prairie. So Got it. get off Reiner Road and hang left on Jenny Run right by the YMCA and we'll see you there. Sounds great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks thank to you. all of our guests and thank you for watching. That's it for us here on Talk of the Town.